Hi everybody, my name is Debbie Ray and I'm the owner of PedigreePups.com and today I'd like to take some time to share some more information with you about another uh, dog group from the AKC. Today I'd like to talk with you about the working dogs. Now what exactly is the AKC working dog group? Well the working dog group are dogs that were bred to help man in various jobs be it herding, tracking, pulling carts, water rescues, whatever. The dogs of this group were originally bred to serve humans in very practical and very specific ways. So these are the dogs that are most often associated with guarding or leading, guiding, protecting, pulling, or saving lives. The working dog groups are also bred for many generations for very definite purchase purposes and it's often said that these dogs are the happiest and that you know uh, few animals are happier than a working dog that's doing its job. Overall, these working dogs are dogs that need occupations or, or some kind of job to fill their days in order to be happy and content. And due to their large size and strength, many of the members of this dog breed group may not be suitable pets for, you know, for most families simply because they may not have a lot of activity going on or an active job for these dogs to perform. Also due to their working nature, these working dog breeds do require a lot of training. So let's talk a little bit about the members of the working dog breed groups as of March 25th, 2008. And the first dog we'll talk about is the Akita. Now the Akita is originally from Japan. These dogs are extremely loyal to their family and their friends and they're also unusually untol or excuse me, unusually tolerant and patient with children, but they're very reserved and quite aloof with strangers. Now the Akita thrives on companionship. Uh, Helen Keller is credited as being the first person to bring an Akita to the United States. A fence yard is a must for an owner of these dogs. Uh, the Akitas are alert and responsive. They're very dignified and quite courageous. However, they are aggressive toward other dogs and they should never be allowed to run loose off their lead you know, with any other dogs. Additionally, it should be noted that these dogs do vocalize with a lot of different interesting sounds, but they're not considered an excessive barker. Now the Alaskan Malamute is one of the oldest Arctic sled dogs. These dogs have a very powerful and substantial build. They have a very deep chest and they have very, very strong muscle body. Alaskan Malamutes are very athletic dogs and they love the outdoors, but they also thrive as house pets. Uh, be forewarned, however, these dogs are very heavy shedders, especially twice a year. And the Alaskan Malamute can be affectionate and they can be a very friendly, a loyal, and a devoted dog, and they can also be very very playful. The exact qualities that that are known to make a Malamute a poor choice as a guard dog are simply this, the fact that they're so playful and friendly and, and just a very affectionate dog. It's important to know that a Malamute, excuse me, a Malamute, been a long day, a Malamute needs a, a very confident owner who can clearly be the pack leader uh, and train the dog with only the kindest and most firm methods. This can be a very dominant dog, especially with other dogs of the same sex. So make sure that you thoroughly socialize any Malamute around other dogs. Now the Anatolian Shepherd is another large member of the working dog breeds. Uh, this is a very rugged, powerful, and impressive looking canine. Now the Anatolians are, regard are regarded as flock guardians. These dogs are somewhat more long-lived than many of their other uh, large breeds of dogs. These dogs typically have a life expectancy of somewhere around 10 to 14 years of age. These dogs are very slow to mature however compared to many of the other large dog breeds and they don't fully reach their uh, adulthood until they're about four years of age. Now, these are not recommended for apartment life even though they are relatively inactive indoors and they do best if they have at least a large secured fenced in yard for them to exercise in. The Anatolians do need a lot of exercise and they will do best if they have an area where they can run freely inside their own fenced in yard. Now, the Bernice Mountain Dog is a uh, tricolor dog and the ground coat of this dog primarily is black. They do have rich markings of a beautiful rust color and a very, very white. Um, they, are, they are typically historically used for their as being drovers or draft dogs or even watchdogs. These dogs are highly trainable and they have a moderate activity, le activity level as adults. However, when they're puppies, the activity level is much higher. The Bernice Mountain Dog temperament is a very strong point of this breed. These dogs are affectionate, they're very loyal and intelligent, and they make wonderful family pets. 
They are also a very faithful and stable breed of dog. The ideal home for any Bernese Mountain Dog would be inside with the family where they can get along, you know, where they do get along well with children and other pets. Uh, keep in mind these dogs again are slow to mature and they're not particularly long lived. Now the Black Russian Terrier is a dog that was developed as a guard dog by the Red Army and the Soviet Union. Work began around 1930 to produce a very tough, courageous, and all-around military dog that could withstand Russia's harsh climates. Now the Black Russian Terriers are considered late bloomers and they take a long time to be considered fully mature. You must socialize these puppies thoroughly. Like all the other guardian breeds, this dog needs a firm hand and early socialization and training from the beginning. The Black Russian Terrier is slightly larger and more muscular than the Giant Schnauzer and they have a longer coat uh, that should not look as though it's sculpted or trimmed. The best home for these dogs is inside with their family. They do need a very, you know, very close human contact with their owners to be completely happy. They enjoy living close to their owners and family and they love being an indoor dog. Now the Boxer is a very alert dog. They're uh, fearless, playful, they're very fun-loving, and it gained its name because the fact that when the dog's playing, it often strikes out with its front paws when it's fighting, kind of like a boxer. These dogs are often called the Peter Pan of the dog world because they maintain that youthful exuberance until late on in their lives. Their coat is relatively short and they only require a weekly brushing in order to keep, you know, keep their coat under control. And these dogs were developed mainly to serve as a guard dog or a working dog or even a companion dog. This dog breed combines strength and agility with excellent eg the elegance, sorry, and also with style. Now boxers make a perfect addition to a family as long as they're active and, and have a very active lifestyle and they're very energetic. They are generally well behaved with other household pets and they're very friendly toward children. Now the Bull Mastiff is a very large level headed and a steady dog and typically they get along very well with other family pets and they love children. Despite their large size these dogs are relatively agile animals and they have great strength and endurance. The more aggressive, uh, these dogs are more aggressive than the Mastiff and these dogs do need a handler who can assert their dominance with ease and who, who can be the alpha dog in other words. This dog breed was developed by crossing Mastiffs with Bulldogs in England in the early 20s, uh, considered basically about 60% Mastiff versus 40% Bulldog. These dogs are both brave and protective of their family and they were bred to sneak up on poachers, uh, so the dogs you know, bark much less than other, the many other dog breeds. These dogs were bred to approach any intruder and knock them over with their massive size and then pin them to the ground or simply stand in front of the stranger or whoever the intruder was and refuse to let them pass until help came on this on the scene. Now the Doberman Pinscher, uh, comparatively speaking, is also a, a very new breed. These dogs were developed in Germany in the 1860s. This dog breed's creator was a German tax collector named Louis Doberman. Due to his high risk position as a tax collector, he decided to breed a watchdog and a bodyguard that will be capable of handling any and all situations that he may come in contact with. Overall, Dobermans are very easy to teach uh, new things to and they're very quick to learn. They're very versatile dogs also who can do all different kinds of jobs very easily. These dogs excel in any kind of activity they're, they're a part of, for anything from police work to therapy and anything in between. If you don't have the time to properly train your Doberman, you should seriously consider a different breed because these dogs uh, do best with experienced owners. Dobermans should never be allowed to roam loose, and any, any family considering a Doberman pincher should be prepared for a lifelong commitment of daily walks and lots of exercise. Now the German pinchers are well known for their vermin hunting skills and for their instinctual desire to protect their home and their families. They are also very intelligent and they're very, very strong-willed. Now these dogs are also called the standard pincher. Now be forewarned, this dog breed will run after anything that moves quickly, so make sure that you keep this dog on a leash or in a fenced area at all times. These dogs are very territorial and they can also be quite possessive of their owners and property. Also, they're not considered a good breed uh, for people that have children because they'll instinctively protect their owner and often bite first and, they, and then think later. Uh, also, these dogs aren't known to back away from disputes with other dogs. Now, the giant schnauzer should easily resemble, you know, as nearly as possible, a larger and a more powerful version of the standard schnauzer in every way. 
a coat color typically is either black or salt and pepper. They have bushy eyebrows, whiskers, and a beard. Now their harsh double coat requires uh, skilled professional grooming at least twice a year and sometimes in between. This dog breed is known for their loyalty to their owners and they also have a very eager uh, willingness to, to defend their family and their property. These dogs are often called a Velcro dog as well because they want to be with their owner at all times. This is a very reliable breed and they're also good with children and pets if they're socialized with them early on. Remember, socialize, socialize, socialize. Now the Great Dane is, is a very large dark breed that was developed in Germany to hunt wild boars. Now Great Dane must be a spirited dog, they have to be courageous and never timid or shy, and they need to also be friendly and dependable. One of the giant working dog breeds, the uh, Great Dane, is, is very unique in that its general appearance must be so well balanced that it never appears clumsy even though it's so large. Uh, male, male Great Danes should not be less than 30 inches at the shoulders but preferably 32 inches in height or more, providing they're well proportioned. And the female should not be less than 28 inches at the shoulder, but it's preferably, preferable that she be at least 30 inches or more at, at the shoulder, providing she is also well, well proportioned to her height. So these are a giant dog breed, and just keep that in mind. Uh, they do need exercise, and, and just keep this in mind if you decide to bring one of these dogs into your home. They, they can make very, very good pets in the right home. Now the Great Pyrenees, generally speaking, is good with non-canine animals. They're, these dogs are also known as the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. Now they are very intelligent and they have that kind, uh, regal expression. These dogs are often used as flock guardians and they were bred to guard without instruction from human beings. So these dogs are also very slow to mature and they don't re reach their full maturity until they're around two years or so of age. Generally, these dogs have a very quiet composure and they're very patient and tolerant. The Great Pyrenees can be very strong-willed, independent, and somewhat reserved as well, but they are also attentive, fearless, and loyal to their human and animal charges. A fence charge is a must for anyone who owns this breed, otherwise they'll roam off, and typically these dogs consider their domain range to be anywhere from 5 to 15 square miles. Now the Greater Swiss Mountain Dogs historically were used to help farmers uh, with a variety of chores, anything from herding to pulling carts. This dog's natural drafting ability soon led to its nickname, the Poor Man's Horse. Originally these were considered also as herding dogs, but were later used for draft work. The Greater Swiss Mountain, Mountain Dogs are also quite athletic, uh, and even though they're such a large dog breed, they're usually pretty responsive to obedience work and, and that sort of thing. Be forewarned, puppyhood can last up to two to three years long in this dog breed because they have a very slow maturing, uh, well they are very slow maturing dogs. A greater Swiss mountain dog will reach close to its adult height by around 18 months of age. However, they'll continue to fill out until they're around three. Normally these are quiet dogs, but they do have a deep loud bark that, you know, combined with their size and, and overall self-assurance will keep your home and your family very well protected. Now the Commodore uh, has, has a, that unusual or that one-of-a-kind uh, coated, corded coat. These dogs are a flock guardian, they're not a herder, and uh, these dogs were typically uh, developed in Hungary to, to guard large herds of animals on the open plains. And they're not often charged with protecting the herd by themselves uh, with no assistance or no commands from their protector. Or they were often charged, I'm sorry, with protecting the herd by themselves with no kind of help from, from their master. Characteristically, this breed has a very dense corded protective coat and these are large dogs. Uh, they have plenty of bone and substance and they are covered with that unusual heavy coat of white cords. The mature, experienced dog needs to stay close to his charges, whether it be his flock or his family. These dogs are selflessly devoted to their family and charges and will defend them against any attack. Now the Kuvas is a very spirited dog of keen intelligence. They are very determined, courageous, and they're very curious. Uh, these dogs are also very sensitive to praise and blame. Primarily, these are one family dogs. They're very devoted and gentle and patient without being overly demonstrative, and they're always ready to protect their loved ones, even to the point of self-sacrifice. Because of its natural guarding instinct, this breed is very protective of its family, and they're also very suspicious of any strangers. 
they do possess an extremely strong instinct to protect uh, your children and any new dog will need lots of exercise and they do shed all the time by the way now the Mastiff is a very sensitive tender and a laid-back companion this dog's best home is inside you know inside with you with access to a large fenced-in yard this dog also needs lots of exercise and should be kept in firm shape the impression of a Mastiff is one of grandeur and dignity males are often very you know very considered uh, massive and they can weigh up to around 230 pounds while females can be anywhere up to around 170 pounds so these are huge dogs these dogs are good with children but may overwhelm the smaller children simply because of their massive size and weight they are also good with other pets if they're socialized with them when they're very young now the Neapolitan Mastiff is the Italian cousin to England's Mastiff and to France's Dog de Bordeaux the Neapolitan is a somewhat newer breed than those dogs but it does have an ancient history it is said that this dog's roots go back to the ancient war dogs used by the Romans and possibly even to Alexander the Great it is said that the Italians created this dog to amaze and astonish those that don't know the breed by creating all those fantastic wrinkles and that unforgettable head its massive bone structure and lumbering movement and looks alone are enough to deter just about anything the Neapolitan Mastiff is a giant dog, and they can easily weigh, you know, more than 150 pounds at maturity. Um, due to their massive size, they're also a relatively short-lived breed, with a normal life expectancy of somewhere between eight to ten years. The Newfoundland. Now, these dogs love the great outdoors, especially the water, and they need lots of exercise. As the name implies, this dog breed originated in Newfoundland. Now this is a brave and a very loyal companion and they're also known as Newfies. Now sweetness of temperament is the hallmark of this breed and this is one of the more, most important characteristics of this dog breed. A multi-purpose dog at home, on land, or in water, the Newfoundland is capable of draft work and they possess a very natural and very strong water rescue tendency. Uh, this dog breed is famous for rescuing drowning people all over the world. They are very good with children, but you need to supervise them, especially with smaller children because, you know, the dog might knock them over simply because of their size. They are also very good with other pets. Regular and moderate exercise is important, as is the ability for the dog to have frequent opportunities to swim. Now, the Portuguese water dog once existed all along the coast of Portugal where it was taught to act as a courier from ship to ship or also from ship to shore. Now, this dog was also taught to herd stray fish into fishing nets and to receive, retrieve uh, any kind of lost tackle or broken nets. Now, this highly intelligent multi-purpose dog breed is distinguished by two different coat types, either the curly or the wavy. Their, their closest relatives uh, are the standard poodles and they have a lot of things in common with those such as both dogs dog breeds have curly coats and don't shed and they're both highly intelligent the Portuguese water dog needs people and thrives as a member of the family and they proved themselves over and over to be very trustworthy and energetic dogs and they love to be the center of attention now the Rottweiler is a is a very large or medium large I should say robust self-confident and very powerful dog and these dogs are black with very very clearly defined rust markings physically imposing this is an intimidating looking dog that ranks over and over at the top of the charts for being an excellent watchdog as well as being a tremendous family protector they're definitely not the dog breed for everyone the Roddy needs a lot of physical activity on a daily basis and mental as well as physical. Vigorous games and long walks are highly recommended. They are good with children if socialized with them at an early age and the dog can easily live indoors or outdoors. However, this dog will always prefer to be indoors spending lots of time with its family pack. Now the St. Bernard is a breed were originally established somewhere around AD 1050. Now these big dogs are slow to mature size-wise and it may take up to three years before they reach their full adult maturity and they can weigh you know up easily up to 100 to 140 to 180 pounds these dogs do shed a lot and because they're such big dogs to start with they shed a lot another thing they drool and sometimes they some you know some dogs will drool less than others but overall saints produce a lot of saliva so if you're turned off by drool you might want to consider another dog breed Saints also need lots of room and a lot of exercise, and if you have ample space and have the time to exercise your dog, Saints make very good house dogs and companions. 
Now the Sammy it originally came in many different colors. However, the breed standard today requires that the coat be white or cream, biscuit, or white with little biscuit shading. Any other colors of Sammy are considered to be disqualifications. These dogs are well known for their alert and happy expression, which has earned it the nickname the Sammy Smile. And when you own a Sammy, you've got a friend for life. They thrive on companionship and they remain playful well into their old age. The alert Sammy will easily adapt to any environment and they're equally happy living in a house or apartment as long as they're given plenty of exercise. The Siberian Husky is a dog that loves to run and it must be you know, kept under control at all times. His moderate compact and well well furred body he has erect ears and, and his his you know tail brushed over the top of his body so it easily suggests his northern heritage if you own a husky it is of the utmost importance that you have a securely fenced in yard the husky is a medium-sized working dog and they're quick and they're very light on their feet and they're, they're just very fast moving dogs these dogs must stay school and must stay cool, forgive me, must stay cool in hot weather. So the best home for these dogs is indoors with plenty of exercise. And they can be good with children and other pets. However, huskies may chase smaller animals, including cats. And the standard schnauzer is a very intelligent dog breed who learns quickly and they're known to be quite mischievous. These dogs need a firm owner who has the time and the patience for training as well as ample time for grooming the dog. His rugged build and dense harsh coat are accentuated by the hallmark of the breed, those arched eyebrows and that bristly mustache and whiskers. Schnauzers are excellent companions and they're known for their love and devotion to their family and their reliability with children. Of all the three Schnauzer breeds, Miniature, Standard, and Giant, all of which um, are bred and registered as distinct, as distinct dog breeds, the Medium or Standard is the prototype. In America, this dog breed was originally classed as a terrier, but German breeders have always regarded the Schnauzer principally as a working dog. This is not the dog breed for someone just looking for a placid dog. Now, the Tibetan Mastiff is a very intelligent and independent dog. They're strong-willed, and they're also rather reserved, uh, typically with strangers. Over the years, these dogs have been primarily used um, as a property guardian. Now, this dog breed originated in Tibet as a guard dog and flock dog. They make an, an exception, exceptional, oh, sorry, exceptional family pet and a protector, and these are a very large breed that can weigh between 150 to 200 pounds, so they do require frequent grooming and moderate daily exercise. Now, Tibetan Mastiff puppies are very slow to mature, and they do require lots of proper socialization as well as a lot of patience from their owners. Socialization of this dog breed is critical because of the breed's reserved nature with strangers. Now, if you'd like to learn about other AKC purebred dog breeds, or if you would like to learn about any of the other AKC dog breed groups, please visit my website at www.pedigreedpups.com to learn more. I hope you've enjoyed this information today. I hope you've learned something. And if we can help you with anything, please visit the website. Again, that's pedigreedpups.com. Thank you.